he's definitely not a player that adjusts like that. He says, I'm going to do the same thing every single time and just outplay you. Now, that's good sometimes, yeah. that's bad sometimes. It really comes down to hack whether or not he can uh, materialize his advantage with his siege tanks normally to take out Pulp. Now, you just saw a big banana grin emerge on my face, yeah, what's that? You know why that is? Why? Because the countdown has begun. Oh, baby. Game one, day one, match one. It's going to be on Hyun Su between Pulp and Hack. Game's getting started. Let's hop into it. Number one. Spawning up in the top right-hand corner, the underdog in his group. A lot of win in round one. It's Star Tail Hack. And over in the bottom left, the two-time WCS America champion. It is CM Storm's pole. And I just want to say again from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much for coming out today. I'm so thrilled to be back in Canada again. It's been too long since there's been an event in Canada. Indeed. Now, something we were talking about at the start of this game, down here in the bottom side, this expansion extended. Siege tanks, obviously, huge opportunity to deal a lot of damage. The natural expansion in the third do tend to be a little bit tucked back, so you do have that advantage. Watchtowers, the key control points. This choke blocks the back three expansions and vice versa for Pult's side of the map. So, you know, there's been not as much mech in the Terran versus Terran matchup lately, but this is a map where we do tend to see it used infrequently. What are your thoughts on the mech versus bio as this game's getting started? I think mech versus bio is perfect. I think mech has the advantage if you are able to do it right. You need to shut down a lot of positions, but because mech just relies on never losing that main army, you don't have to worry about getting a lot of resources because there's not a lot of bases on the map. A bio player only can have a max of, let's say, four expansions, the top four or the bottom four. So just yep. playing that deny game, you can kind of instigate those attacks, be cost efficient, and just say, you will be You'll, you'll run out, you'll lose the War of Attrition. Yeah, and I really like that point you bring up about the safe four bases. Mech functions best when it does have eight gas. So uh, obviously all those metal units, the factories themselves cost quite a bit of gas. Polt looks like he's beginning to get, uh, begin the gas stockpiling right away, going for a refinery immediately after his barracks. Will he throw down another refinery? It looks like he's trying to hide it from his opponent. Up on the top side though, Hack has done a delayed refinery. This generally indicates an ex expo factory or a reactor expand. I've been watching a lot of hacks play on this map in particular as he's prepared against Pult. I was just watching in the player's room behind his mm. shoulders. He loves to go Banshee follow up after this. Cloak really? Banshee wow. and just play it overall very standard. Now, what are the implications of going Cloak Banshee after a build like this? Because some people are really for it. Some people say it's so inefficient because you're getting the Banshee so late. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a weird trade. Uh, just in a general sense, you'd say, yeah, it's not, not correct to do. But again, the map is having a lot of influence. Look at this enormous ridge. It's very easy to exploit the outer edge. And of course, this backside path is very easy to sweep in from these angles as well. There's not a lot of good chase paths. There's chokes on the pursuit. So Hack does have that advantage if he does elect to go Banshee oh, to have those retreat paths. And it looks like Pult may very well be doing the same thing. But we've seen Pult 2 exploit this ridge right here. Small marine engagement at the front. Look at that micro from both players. Oh but my goodness. Pult is going to come out on top. What a peculiar move, but Hack's marines arrive in time. Pult extends a little too far. It's a two-for-two two trade, but he delays the command center for a considerable amount of time. That helps him uh -huh. out with the overall build to continue this aggression. And not only that, killing a couple of Marines, even if it's a two-for-two two trade, that's two less Marines that you have to defend against those Banshees. Well, it looks like, as you were talking about, Hack does love that straight tech up all the way to the starport. Tech Lab here kind of hints that he wants to go for Cloak Banshee. Pult looks like he's going to be doing the same thing. Cloak Banshee does have the really nice exploits. I mean, I can't emphasize enough that this ridge is very difficult to hold early on. Placing a tank here or tank on low ground, you have a lot of freedom of movement as the Banshee player. Hacks Expo wrapping up. Pult's only getting started, so the onus now is on Pult to deal that damage. And this reactor follow-up, again, hints that Pult does want to do this marine tank follow-up push. I'm just interested to see 
how Hack is going to go about this. And look at that Siege Tang coming out and said, oh, so he's not. He's changing completely, trying to get the magic count as three Vikings so he can do a single scan and kill that Banshee. I like it. Great read. There's the one yeah. scan. He sees exactly what we were talking about, the cloaked Banshee, and even gets the opportunity to see the Banshee finish. No opportunity for Polt to switch yeah. plans now. He's definitely going to be committing to that. No doubt going to be giving this over to the barracks. It's going to be a Marine follow-through. And how will Polt transition out? Will his factory get a Tech Lab add-on? It will. Very aggressive shape from Polt. Not even planning on doing any of that late-game stuff, adding on extra barracks, adding on extra engineering base. And the first connection begins. Yep, Viking will chase this Banshee out. Cloak is almost researched, but this is a lot of damage uh -oh, being uh -oh. taken. That means the Banshee can't re-engage because a single scan could probably take out this Banshee. So it looks like Polt is going to swing back around. Hack. Ooh, oh, Hack may goodness. very well sniff it out. Nope, Banshee's going to be able to escape. Hack's now immediately planting down. Nice missile turret placement. None in the main at this point in time. Going to rely on that Raven. Yep. Really nice placement from Hack. That's kind of cool, too. He gets the first Viking just to draw out a little bit of Banshee damage, and then after that, he goes for uh -oh. the Raven. From the backside, the Viking it. takes it down. Second Banshee incoming so far. It's looking good for Hack. Yes, there's a little bit of indirect damage from those turrets, but I would say just from the build order's income tab showing 32 to 30 Harvesters, but the extra mule helps out so much. So Pult's really got to do some serious damage. Oh, it's not going to get that opportunity to at all. I mean, right now... In the kill tab, we see it's just a pair of workers have been killed by Polt thus far. These Banshees have done very little, but Polt is going not long game at all. I don't see an engineering bay anywhere. No upgrades coming up. He's going to be going Stim Marine with a little bit of tank medevac support for a fast push. But Hack is also gearing up to move out as well. Can you realistically do any damage with this push out, though? I know there's a couple of spots that you can take, but... I don't know, it seems a little bit risky to push out with these siege tanks. Yeah, I mean, ordinarily this would be a fine push timing for Hack, but Polt has decided to go straight powering mode. I mean, look, only now oh. getting the engineering bay, and oh goodness, it's going to be a transition to mech from Hack. Yes, it is. Infernal Pre-Igniter was chosen. That's the clear indicator. So this is going to be really interesting stim. 75% of the way done for Polt, so Hack must tread very oh, beautiful lightly. tactical maneuver by Hack. Threatens the tip and then immediately pulls back to the side. These siege tanks are going to fall. A seeker missile's going to land. Beautiful timing push by Hack. Uh, he can't get the closing blow on that siege tank, but some great pressure already. Still needs to be careful. Stim almost finished. Just about 30 seconds away. If he's still here, he'll be overrun so easily. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, another oh. tank falls. Hack! being exceptional at sniping these off. A completely unorthodox timing push from Hack, designed specifically on this map. He can threaten this area so much, sieging Perfect. up, blocking off the two, pulls back just in time. Brilliant move by Hack, who's gonna be gaining a clear tactical lead. He's gotten the opportunity to tech all the way up to his mech composition. He has the para factories with Tech Lab. He's getting all the rest of the reactors he needs. Third command center en route. That supply count seems to favor Pult, but don't let that deceive you. Right now, Hack has gotten a huge benefit. He has had no threats thrown at him early. His plan to go mech hasn't been shut down at all. And if you look at the units tab, two to two. Sea Chen count normally favors the bioing Terran at this phase of the game because yes, normally yes. the mecking Terran is so busy getting their, the production and at the same time getting a lot of Hellions. So you don't have room to really make those siege tanks. You don't have the gas to do so. But the fact that there even means Pult has almost zero ability to attack out or do a lot of damage, I think Hack is in a perfect position for this game. Pult's going to be attempting these pokes, but these brilliantly placed turrets are going to only allow Pult to hit the geyser. That's not really going to be that beneficial. Scan up in center reveals everything. Pult now knows that he's up against a mecking player. He's going to run headlong into that superior tank count. Oh, Hack's a little bit extended. And the point of the base still held. Pult is forced to retreat. Still, Siege Tanks will keep him safe. So far, looking really good from Hack with the defense. Losing one Siege Tank does hurt a little bit, but we'll see Stim. Remember, this is the big time where Stim can be very applicable, but at the same time, it's hard to get things done with defensive, defensive Siege Tanks. I mean, what can you realistically do to defensive Siege Tanks? Yeah, I mean, right now, Hack will advance here, likely taking this expansion. Doesn't want to go for this one quite yet. If he can maintain the Siege Tank edges, is an excellent position to be in. It also helps him defend that point, but that would commit Hack to being 
on the defensive footing for the entire game. So he may very well still expand to this rightmost base. Sensor tower now going up for hack. He wants to protect the backside from drops. Yeah, just everything's so smart. Uh, and this drop is going to be his main advantage, I think. This is going to be the key to actually draw Pult a little bit back because he's going to realize the reinforcements are going to go back here. He can maybe start to push out in the middle of the map. We'll find out as Pult starts to aggress up, takes two big shots on his Marines, and his Hellions move out. And at the same time, there's that drop. Amazing reaction time from Pult, but I mean, there are not that many units nearby. Hack is going to deny this mining for quite a chunk of time. All the rest of the forces from Hack safely defending back at home base. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, it gets a good shot up, but it's not going to be enough. But what about that third base? Hack being very proactive with those early Hellions. Hellion. Those are lining up. Yeah, he gets a couple good shots. And he will be able to do a little bit more damage here. A nice drop from, uh, from Pult, just reacting a little bit better. The Hellion finally getting cleaned up. In the meantime, Hack trying to take his own third base. He will be successful here as look at how many units are actually out on the field. It's just those siege tanks right there. Now, what's interesting is that the big attack move that you would plan to do against a mecking player is dropping lots of medevacs on top of the tanks when all the Hellbats are out of position. Hack is hoping for this to happen. He's getting mines. It's an extremely easy way to lose your entire army as Pult. Flying over a mine at the wrong time, all your medevacs get eliminated. Very unusual to see a lot of mines in this uh, position because it's so traditional to go Hellbat tank, but that's oh, the yeah. modern twist that Terran players are throwing in. And it just adds an extra layer of complexity, I think, that not a lot of bioing players are used to. And because of that, there's going to be this short, brief time where it's going to be so much more effective than we normally see. But now Pult finally trying uh -oh. to aggress up, but again, just positioning so well. Hack is on top of it. And even though there's a big, uh, I would say, position advantage overall uh -oh. for Pult, I mean, little attacks like this. Oh my god, oh my Pult god, not Hack's reacting. not noticing. Oh my god, Pult in a terrible position is now pushing up to the top side, has found a point of weakness, but it looks like it will not be broken. Tank up on the high ground. Pult's going to have to take it down. Meanwhile, Small Force cleans up that drop. Pult, yet again, despite all this, seems to be pulling quite far ahead in the supply count. Yes, he is. It's right now 143 to 129. But I do want to say that I feel like Hack is in a better position. He's just so much more defensive. Pult still needs to get work done because if he just lets this happen, look at the production tab. Three siege tanks at a time. It doesn't matter if you have 3-3 three, three against 1-1. One, one. Those siege yeah. tanks are going to rip apart your entire army. Siege tanks, <laughs> a pretty potent balancing factor, to be honest. Very easy to equalize when you're at a deficit. But look at this. No factory even has an add-on. Pult is going tankless bio. This is an incredibly aggressive variant. Oh, and yeah. Hack is choosing the perfect way to pick it apart. Pult is going to have to be on the opposite side of the map attacking the whole time. He is not prepared to deal with these drops, accidentally shooting his own barracks, dropping it the natural. And moving over to the third base. Nice defense so far from Pult. Great reactions. He might be able to take out this medevac. Gets it down. But the Hellbats continue to advance to try to pick off anything that they can. Medevac drop on the backside also gets cleaned up. It looks like in the kill count, 22. Only two workers killed in that engagement, but this is what scares me, that tank count, Andre. Yes. It's at eight, with three being produced at a time, as you said. And Hack feels ready. He is pushing out right now. Fourth base being taken. That is absolutely a, necess a necessity for this build that Pult's doing. You can see the sky transition. Tech Lab being added on uh, to, I believe, the starport at this point. Yep. And, and this is where he has to have his bio hold off the tank push long enough for yes. that transition to actually happen. And all of a sudden, there's a big composition advantage from Pult. Yeah, I mean, this is the exact game that Hack is going to be strong at playing. Normally, players, like you say, when they're going bio, have tons of tanks. They're holding positions with those tanks, using the bio to sweep around to the flanks. But in this case, Pult is playing the delay game. He's oh. trying to get up a massive well, air army. Exploiting windows like this, steps forward. Where are the siege oh. tanks? Oh, Hellbat drops on top of the bio. Hack prepared for the invasion. It's an extremely Brilliant. even trade, and Pult is forced to retreat. Brilliantly done. That drop on top of all the units gave him really good connection. And on top of that, weakened up the bio enough to one-shot and kill all of the damage that the Marines and Marauders were doing. The siege tanks did so much in that last fight, and now swooping in again, killing the last remaining siege tank. 
Colt is going to defend his last siege tanks as best he can, but he has to be very wary of walking into those tank shots. Right now, Pult is trying to gain control of the skies. If he can knock down Hack's Viking count, then he can use Banshees to eat away at these tank lines, which will slow Hack's push even further. Now, picking off a couple of Vikings, he's moving up yet again. Gonna pick off this small force. Now, I'm actually really surprised so far, Hack. I thought he would be a lot more efficient than it is, but uh, so far, you have to keep in mind, when you're going up against Bio, the growth of Bio is much faster than the growth of the yeah, mech. Yeah. So trades a lot of times actually work out, if they're even, they work out a lot better for the mecking player just because, um, or excuse me, not the mecking player, the, the Bio player, just because they can just oh rematch my. really quick. There's that stowaway of Vikings darting in, annihilating all the air, and here it comes, beginning to pick off at the Siege Tank. There is only one Banshee, though. And this, this is where things get a little bit tough. A Thor is going to have to be uh -oh. made. Thor takes 60 seconds uh -oh. to pop out. What's here to defend at home? Nothing, nothing at all. Colt swooping in. He's just about maxed. Only Hellbell bats moving back. All the sea tanks are getting ripped apart. And now going into the natural, finally the Banshee is going to oh, force no. these units away. A single mistake, Andre. That's all it takes versus Colt. Hack's defensive line has been broken. His siege tanks are falling one at a time to a single Banshee. And Polt is looking for more engagements. The Hellbats begin to fall, but tanks cannot chase Bio down. Hack may very well lose this third and every SCV edit. Oh, goodness. And how can the Thor ever really connect with that Banshee? Or, yeah, with the Banshee. He can't. The Marines and Runners are still ripping apart everything while the Banshee is over top, killing each siege tank one by one. 11 kills on the Banshee. And that's going to be all she wrote for two bases for Hack, who had an amazing position, a comfortable lead, and in one fell swoop, Holt has decimated Hack's defensive line. Oh, gosh. Now swooping into the main base. It looks like a nice scan, preemptive scan. Going to drop directly on top of these siege tanks. You need to be careful because uh -oh, those widow mines. Widow mines in the back, oh. but it does only pick off one medevac. Pult successfully drops 177 to 49 supply. GG. Pult will take game number one, exercising his control of the mid uh, end game stage yet again. This guy is unbelievable. Hack, I felt, was in a great position yep. for Mech against Bio. Normally, he felt like a minute, a minute and a half ahead of his opponent. Normally, you want that air switch a lot yep. earlier. You want the fourth base a lot earlier. Pult didn't have that. But what Pult did have was just knowing what to do with his units at all times. Yeah, I mean, you think of what does a strategy mean